Dead Island 2 is of course a zombie game packed full of weaponry for players to take a swing at, and there are plenty of melee weapons as well as a fair share of guns for you to find that all range in rarity. And as you progress through the game, you will gradually find legendary weapons whilst exploring the area. And although many of them can't be obtained until completing the main story due to their sheer power, it is still definitely worth knowing where all of these legendary weapons are and what these legendary weapons are as well. So we'll be doing a complete Dead Island 2 legendary weapon guys in this video. So let's waste no more time and let's get straight into it. So the first legendary weapon that we'll be looking at is Blood Rage. So Blood Rage is an incredibly lethal knife that's a callback to the original Dead Island. This blade was once wielded with Xian Mei, who was a lethal assassin in Dead Island 1 and one of the players that you could actually well play as within the original title. This weapon comes with the fixed perks of Puncture Wounds, which increases the amount of critical damage done with each critical hit, and Infectious, which causes bleed damage to spread to other zombies. Besides this, the modification on the legendary weapon is also locked. This is a superior melee puncturing mod that increases the amount of bleeding damage it does to a zombie. So, how do you get this? Now, you'll be able to earn this weapon by completing the Lost and Found quest located in the Lifeguard HQ on the pier. When you find a named crusher called Dante, he will drop the first clue that starts the Fool's Gold quest, which is obviously by killing him. So, after finding the the rest of the clues you will uncover treasure that is in fact blood rage so there you go that is how you get that weapon so now let's move on to brutalizer so many of the legendary weapons in dead island 2 are part of the maiming type of melee weapons brutalizer is no different this sharp machete was made to cut the limbs off of zombies and the perks that are locked on it to reinforce this playstyle are definitely there firstly the perk bloodlust means that every critical hit to a zombie's limbs will do more limb damage as well as weaken them. This actually becomes even stronger as the perk can stack, meaning that you can become ruthless with your attacks. The modification of Superior Melee Mutilator also means that the weapon does an even higher amount of physical damage. However, this does mean it doesn't dish out any other status effect, something worth noting there. So let's go over how to get it. The Brutalizer is one of the most long-winded legendary weapons for you to get your hands on. This is because you must complete the entirety of the Bozzy Art side quest. You will first need to complete both the other two side quests in Beverly Hills before the artist will actually appear. And as you unlock new Apex variants, this artist will require new limbs to complete her work of art. And once her project is complete, she will give you this maiming weapon. So there you go, that is how you can get the Brutalizer and how it works within Dead Island 2. So let's move on to Big Shot. Now there are only two legendary guns in Dead Island 2, but they are both a necessity of your artillery for how fun they are to use and how incredibly lethal they are too. Big Shot, the demolition style pistol, is the first one that you will likely unlock. Although it may look like a pistol, Big Shot takes a shotgun rounds due to how hard hitting it is. With the perk Boomstick, these usual shots cause explosions that have the chance of traumatizing the zombies, which will actually stun them. Now you shouldn't really reload it too quickly, as the fewer bullets in the gun, the more damage it is likely to do. So let's go over how to get this gun. You won't be able to earn Big Shots until the end of the main storyline. Chances are if you haven't have watched this, then you might actually have missed it due to not realizing there's actually quite a lot more to do within the area after the main story. So when returning to Emma's mansion, there should be a new side quest called It's Not Your Fault. During this quest, you will be forced to back down into the sewers to collect seismic readers. Once completing the quest, you'll be rewarded with the gun. So there you go, that's how you get big shots within Dead Island 2. So let's move on to Emma's Wrath. Now, bulldozer weapons also have their own legendary weapon, and Emma's Wrath is a large hammer that you actually may have seen Sam B using throughout the story of Dead Island 2. Eventually, this melee weapon finds itself in your own hands, and it is deadly. Besides its intense superior melee impact, packs a mod that increases its physical damage while also having the chance to traumatize the undead. One of the other greatest perks this hammer has is overkill. When performing a successful skull stomp or counter, the next hit of Emma's Wrath will trigger a shotgun blast with no bullets required. So let's go over how to get it. Now unfortunately you won't be able to get your hands on it until after completing the main story 
of Dead Island 2, but it is apparently also too powerful to use in the main story, but I'm sure there's still some fun for you to have with this weapon throughout the side quests when you're slaying all of those zombies. So let's move on to the next weapon, which is Body Count. So the last legendary gun that players can actually get their hands on is the secret weapon of the military, known as Body Count. With a ranged superior puncturing mod, if the bullets don't kill the zombie, the bleeding status effect it causes definitely will. This bleed damage can be spread to other undead through the fixed perk of Exit Wound, as well as each kill using the gun increases your damage further. So let's go over how you can get your hands on it. So once again, Body Count is a legendary weapon that unfortunately you won't be able to find until you have completed the main story missions of Dead Island 2. When returning to the military barracks of Venice Beach, you will find a named zombie called LT Ford. Once you do kill him, he will drop the start of the clues needed to complete the Lost and Found quest called Redacted, and once you've done that, you'll get your hands on the treasure, which is the Body Count weapon. Let's move on to the next legendary weapon, which is the One. So the One is another great legendary weapon that you can get your hands on, is the glorious longsword known as the One. Like the Brutalizer, this weapon comes equipped with the superior melee mutator mod that does substantial physical damage. However, where this epic sword differs is through its fixed perks, such as Swift's Blow, which allows heavy attacks to charge faster. The perk Headhunter then encourages you to decapitate the zombies to cause an explosion, which will also heal you for any damage that you may have taken. So let's go over how you can get this. So the one also can't be obtained until you have completed the main story, unfortunately, although it includes some other steps. You will need to complete the side quest of Beacon of Hope found in Hollywood Boulevard. This will give you the sword as a reward. However, to unlock this side quest, you must first complete the other side quests, the Terror of Sound Stage 7 in Monarch Studios, and this can be completed before the main story. So something worth noting there to be a bit efficient with getting this legendary weapon. So let's move on to the Krakatoa. Continuing the theme of movie set props or those that replicate them, the Krakatoa is another maiming weapon that seeks to reap the souls or heads of the undead in its attacks. Unlike the other maiming weapons mentioned, this large axe burns its foes due to being equipped with the superior melee cremator mod. Those ignited by the flames of the axe will then be able to prime the axe to do its reaper perk, which causes heavy attacks to inflict even more fire damage, as well as increased damage to limbs. Continuing to maim these foes will also cause fuel to drop on the ground for even more fiery chaos. So let's go over how to get this pretty insane weapon. So you will be disappointed once again to hear this is another weapon that you won't be able to use until completing the main story. Quite unfortunate with a lot of these weapons. Now after that point, you should visit the Sterling Hotel in the Ocean Avenue to pick up the Lost and Found quests for Steve from the board. After going on a search for Steve, you'll finally find him and assist him in finding his leading stars. You will then be rewarded with this dangerous prop from his one film for helping him. So let's move on to the next weapon, which is Party Starter. So, the final legendary weapon, which is Party Starter, is an absolutely ruthless weapon. This is a knuckle duster known as Party Starter, and this is the only legendary frenzy weapon available in the game, and it certainly exceeds in impressing its players. Like the Krakatoa Axe, the Party Starter hits with a lethal fiery force that will ignite zombies in flames. Killing a zombie with heavy attacks will make you resistant to fire while setting the surrounding undead aflame. This allows you to be a lot more reckless in your frenzy. So let's go over how to get it. So Party Starter is the final melee weapon you can obtain after completing the main story. Your next stop after this completion should be to return to the Sterling Hotel on Ocean Avenue and find the bathroom on the first floor. Picking up the phone that can be found there will start the drunk and disorderly lost and found quest. This will set you off on a search for several named zombies to kill. Once finding the last one, they will drop the keys to a car back at the hotel with the knuckle dusters inside. There you go, that is how you can get all of the legendary weapons within Dead Island 2 and how they all work, and they are really, really cool. The only disappointing thing is that pretty much all of them will only be available once you have completed the main quests, but of course that is just because they are too powerful, so at least you get to have some fun with them during side quests once you have finished the main story missions, so maybe it is worth saving some of these side quests until after the main story missions so that you can enjoy using the legendary weapons for something that is somewhat useful. But there you go, that does just about wrap up things here. Now on screen now you are seeing a link to a video where I do a complete beginner's guide to Dead Island 2 so hit the link on the screen if you are interested in watching that.